morning, everybody. How are we doing today? Isn't it good to be in God's house? I'm so glad so many of you are here today. Those of you watching online, thanks for joining us. I want to say a special hello to the Isaac Television Network and the Internal Life Television Network. Thank you for joining us today. Let's give them a big hand watching all over today. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Well, a couple things before I get into the Word today. Uh, how many saw that Maverick City is coming to Family Christian Center? That's exciting. Now, I'm going to tell you, we're not publicly advertising yet because we want to let our folks who want to go to the concert get the tickets first. So go get the tickets today, okay? Sound good? And get those, and then we're going to let people know later on the week, but we wanted everybody who wants an opportunity to get that. So they're coming to a Christmas concert special with us. It's going to be awesome, and I'm so excited. When we had newsboys here, it was completely filled, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, when people find out, it's going to be completely packed because uh, they draw a lot of people. We sing a lot of their music. It's, it's pretty wonderful. So, all right, let's move on to the next thing. Um, we got a lot to talk about. A lot's happened since last week. We, we prayed together uh, about that storm, and man, when I see so many clips, so many videos, and then I have friends on the ground in different places in the country, it's, it's troubling to hear how much devastation has taken place from the storm. Just devastating. I can't get my head around it. Um, I talked to a friend in West Florida. It was terrible. Talked to friends in North, uh, outside of Florida, uh, Georgia, just different places. It's just, my heart is so gripped by all this stuff. And then, lo and behold, I look at the news and, are you kidding me? You know, if your name's Milton, I love you, but this is crazy. You know, we, we need to be praying that God would just intervene in these storms right now. Because we are, we are ground zero from what I saw before I gave up here. So we, we need to believe God, okay? We need to be wise and do whatever preparations we need to do, but we need to also trust God, right? And, and trust that He's with us today, amen, and He's going to help us. And so I'd like to spend a little time and pray for all those that were affected by the first storm, and God, ask God's help for this one too as well. So can we pray together? And if you're watching from Pakistan or India or all different places in Europe, we, we have a hurricane coming to Florida, and we ask for your prayers too, those of you that are watching on the network. So thank you for that today. Father, we ask for your safety and your protection. People are hurting right now all over to the north of us, to the west of us from this last storm and we ask the angels would be surrounding those that are in need right now. People would have a supernatural sensitivity to where people are at and their needs and their circumstances and that God that you would make a way where there seems to be no way. We are asking for heaven's help, heaven's hand, heaven's touch. God intervene. Touch people in places of authority to help and help them all to work together in a spirit of unity to help humanity, to help people that are in need right now. We just, we need your help. So God, we're putting all this past storm and the recovery and I think about the people that lost their lives and lost everything. God, comfort them today. Our hearts hurt for them. We, ju we just need your help today, Jesus. We humble ourselves asking for heaven's help right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, as we see this track is saying that this storm is coming to hit Florida, God, we ask for your mercy. We ask for your grace. We ask that angels would be dispatched from the throne room of heaven to watch over and protect and to help people today. God, I pray you just somehow slow that storm down or block it or do something, God. You're, you're a God of miracles. You made heaven and earth. Anything's possible with you. And we're, we're humbling ourselves before you, O oh God. We are asking for your help. Spare people's lives. Protect people, God. And Lord, I thank you that even when we're discouraged, even when we feel hopeless, that you, we can look to heaven from whence comes our help. And the Bible says the name of the Lord is a high tower and the righteous run into it and they're safe. And I thank you that there's no other name greater in heaven and earth than the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, we ask for you to intervene and help now, oh God. And I thank you that you listen, 
you care and you're watching over our lives and we give all these things into your precious hands. It's in Jesus' name we pray right now. Come on, everybody. Amen. Come on, amen. To God be the glory today. Thank you, God. You're a good God. And you're for us. He is with us. Amen. All right. Well, we are starting a new series today called Learn From Me. Last year, I taught a series called Learn From Me from the perspective of Aaron, the, the brother of Moses, and all the things he saw and the things he probably learned. And this one, I've never done a series like this. Really cool. But this one's Stories from Lot the nephew of Abraham. And how we know Abraham and Lot had a lot going on. And man, week one, buckle up, baby. I'm just going to tell you. And then we're going to see a lot of stuff, but this is going to be a fun series to look through what, what Lot watched and what he experienced. And we're going to talk about that. I want to start this discussion in Genesis chapter 12. And I'm grateful for the Bible. How many appreciate your Bible, right? I'm so grateful for the Bible. It, and, and, and there's so many things to learn and grow from it, right? And so let's start in Genesis chapter 12, verse number one. It says, the Lord had said to Abram, go from your country, from your people, your father's household to a land I'll show you. And he says, and I'll make you a great nation and I will bless you, it says, and I'll make your name great and you will be a blessing, it says there. And I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you, and all the earth will be blessed through you. Now, this is cool. God says to him, I want you to leave everything you know, and you're going to start over. I know you've been shopping at that Publix for 30 years. We're going to go over, we're going to start all over. Everything's brand new. Everything you've known. Come on, the, the high school you went to, the junior high or middle school or where, everything you know, we're going to change it. I need you to walk by faith and trust me in this. And then if you do that, I'm going to bless you. And so the journey begins with Abraham and his family and great promises are given to him. And he says, if you obey, obey me, I will bless you. And I tell people all the time, obedience brings blessings. The obedience to God brings blessings. Verse 4 says, so Abram went. Three short words, but how many know there was preparation? He had to pray through that thing. He had to trust God. And, and some of you, you've went and you've moved and you've transitioned. You've done all the things you've done. And it may not seem like a big deal, but how many know it was a big deal? I mean, how many of you moved to a place called Claremont and you didn't even know where that was? I mean, there's a lot of people, right? You, you packed up the whole thing. You moved by faith to the surrounding area. You know, so you can visualize this. When Abram went, you insert your name there, right? David went or Sarah went or Bob went or Tina or Mary, whatever. You went. It's a big deal. You trusted God. You put it all out there saying, God, I'm trusting you. And so did Abram. And he said, as the Lord told him. And you felt led too. And then it says, and Lot went with him. Hmm, Okay. And Abram was 75 years old, and he set out for Haran. And, you know, I love that he's 75 years old, and he's still having an adventure with God. I don't care what your age is. God still has adventures for you, whether you're young or old. Right, everybody? So he takes his wife. He takes his nephew. And, and so Lot is beginning to watch Abraham's walk with God in front of his eyes. And I think if... Lot could talk to us. He'd tell us this first principle. And the first one is this. You live your life by faith. And that's what, that's what he saw Abram do. He left everything to follow after God. Reminds me of the scripture we quote all the time in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Come on, say it with me. For we walk by and not by. How many know that Abram was doing that thing? I am leaving by faith. I'm taking a walk by faith. I don't even know where I'm going, but I'm trusting God. And he did that. Same chapter, chapter 12 of Genesis, verse 7 says, The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring, I'll give this land. How many know that's pretty cool when God shows up and starts talking to you? He says, And he built an altar there to the Lord who appeared to him. What an amazing thing. So he's walking by faith. He's coming into the land. God appears to him. Verse 9, it says, Then Abram set out and he continued toward the Negev. 
So we see God's moving, things are going good, and Lot has a front row seat to watch him respond to God and connect with him. He's, he's watching all these things, and God reaffirms, I have a promise for you. It's going to happen. And God's so kind to reaffirm his promise to us over and over and over when he says something to us. And then there's verse 10. Are you ready? You ready? <laughs> there was a famine in the land, but I thought... He was in the will of God. But there was a famine in the land. And it says there, it's interesting. It says, and he went down to Egypt to live there for a while because there was, the famine was so severe. One moment God's speaking and showing up, and the next moment there's a famine. And, and Lot's watching all this. And, and I think if he had to look at it retrospect and tell you what he learned. I think you know what he'd say, that God has a plan even when it doesn't look like it. How many know he heard God's voice, he obeyed. How many know everything's supposed to just work out and you're not supposed to have any problems anymore? <laughs> Whoever told us that lied. <laughs> but he, there's a famine. And sometimes you can be in the will of God and have a challenge or a problem or an issue or a situation. And you have to fight through it. You can't quit. You can't give up. You got to keep fighting. Somebody say amen to that, right? Famine doesn't mean it wasn't God's will. Fam Let me say that again. The famine showing up didn't mean he was outside of God's will. He was still in the will of God. You just have to keep moving. And I tell people all the time, the way you lose is if you quit. Don't quit in life. In due season, you'll reap if you faint not, the Bible says. Amen, everybody? So no matter what it looks like, how many know God has a plan? I don't know what you're famine in, but God has a plan for your life today. Amen, everybody? All right. I'm going to read two fired up scriptures. Are you ready? Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Come on. They're plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Come on, amen, right? How many know that's a good scripture this week? This one's a good one too, Deuteronomy 31.8. The Lord himself goes before you and be, will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Come on, God's with you today, everybody. You're not alone during difficult times. Okay, you want a piece of that, you say amen to that. All right. Verse 11, it says, But as he was approaching the boundaries or the borders of Egypt, he asked his wife, to tell everyone that she was his sister? How many know he should have been slapped in Jesus' name for that? <laughs> he says, here's the justification for you're very beautiful. And when the Egyptians see, they will say, they, they will say this is your, his wife. And he says, and let's kill him. And then we can have her for ourselves. But if you say she's my sister, then the Egyptians will treat me well. Come on, they'll give me some presents, some dowry. They'll treat me well because of you and spare my life. And sure enough, when they arrived in Egypt, everyone spoke of her beauty. Now, I think Lot could say something about this to us. You know what I think Lot would say? Do not yield to fear in your life. Because he's yielding to fear. He's start thinking, worst case scenario, they're going to kill me and take my wife. That's what he starts thinking. And you know what? Fear is not a way to live your life. It's, it's a torment. It's torture. And you know what? We don't want to make decisions based on fear. We want to make decisions based on what we feel God's telling us to do. Second, Second Timothy 1.7 says, For God's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Somebody say amen to that. Proverbs said the righteous are as bold as a lion. It also says as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. 
In other words, my life goes in the direction of my strongest thoughts. What do you mean by that? Well, my strongest thoughts actually start coming out of my mouth. And when it starts coming out of my mouth, it becomes an action. And when I start having actions, it becomes habits. And habits change destiny. You want to change your destiny? You want to change your world? You want to change your life? Start it right here with your thoughts. Renew your mind with the Word of God and start speaking what God says about your life, and you'll start to change your actions and your world and how you live. And that's how you simply do it. You keep renewing your mind with the Word of God. I read my Bible whether I want to or not. Sometimes I've had voices in my head said, I don't want to read my Bible. And I said, you get an extra chapter if you keep it up. <laughs> what happened? The voice went away. Just telling you, I'm not kidding you. Verse 15, I haven't heard that voice for years after I backed it up. When the palisade saw her, they praised her to the king, the Pharaoh. And she was taken into the harem. You've seen enough movies like me where there's a harem and there's guards. Come on, those big seven-foot guards with their big swords. And you're not going in there, right? And, you're not, and there's a building and it's locked down and she, she, she's taken. And then Pharaoh gave Abram many, many gifts. Okay, everybody heard the Hebrew? Many gifts because of her. Sheep. Personally, I would think he should be feeling really convicted. Oh, let's bring all the sheep. He's like, oh, thank you, you shouldn't have. Yeah, you shouldn't have, but he got it, right? And then they bring the oxen. How many think he felt a little worse? And then they bring the donkeys. And then they're bringing the men and female slaves, and there was money, and there's camels, and all this stuff. He should be feeling really terrible right now that he just traded his wife for all these presents. It's just terrible. And then, now I got to stop for a minute here. I'm glad I'm not God. Aren't you glad you're not God? Because I get, I, I, I carry around some stuff sometimes. I get a little troubled. Do you ever get troubled? Thank you for the four of you that are so honest. We should start a group afterwards. I mean, sometimes life, you're trying to figure it out, and it's hard to figure it all out sometimes. And then things go in a different direction than you want them to, and you're, you're, we're trying to figure out how do we fix this, and man, God's bigger than us. And, and Abram can't fix the situation. She's stuck in a harem. She's in this building or facility. There's probably guards. He gave his wife away. And if I'm God, I'm like wringing my hands looking for some committee members from the angelic host. Where's Michael? Where's Gabriel? Where's everybody? Bring them in here. We got a problem. We were going to start this great nation through Abram, and he just gave his wife away so we can't have any kids. And she's in a harem, and Pharaoh's about to take her. I'd be like, ah! Come on, that was free. What do I do? When it's out of your hands, it's in a good place that it's in God's hands. And, and we just have to trust that, even though it may not feel like it, but are reminded of Proverbs, come on, you know that one, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Come on, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Come on, glory be to God. How many are in that spot right now where we need to trust God, right? And what does God do? Here comes verse 17. The Lord sent a terrible plague upon Pharaoh's household on account of her being there. God said, listen, this. he's thinking, he made a bonehead move, but I can still intervene and fix this. You know what? I think, I think Lot would tell us God can protect us. How many know, even when you and me have made some boneheaded decisions, you got any of those on a list? You got that regret list? Man, there's some things that, man, I did not do good. I should not have done it. I've made some good decisions and I've made some bad decisions, but how many of God is so big, he can intervene beyond the things that you and I have done? I mean, he's so big. Even when we make bad decisions. Now, please don't go to the bathroom and miss this point. Do not, this is not an excuse to sin and do whatever you want because God will just work it out. Oh, honey, don't you walk around doing that. Lightning come be coming down doing that kind of nonsense. I fear 
It's, I fear God, right? And when you fear God, you don't think like that. So if I sin, I'm not planning it out. Falling into it and planning it out are two different things. Come on. And if you're planning it out, you need to repent, ask God to forgive you, and change by the grace of God. Ask him to help you today. Amen. So God covers Abram even though he shouldn't have done it. That, this is what I'm wanting to show you. Romans 8, 38 and 39, I am convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today, come on, that's appropriate, or our fears or worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky, above, or in the earth below, indeed, come on, nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from his love. That's good stuff, man. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23, for the fun of it. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Amen, everybody. Oh, I got to show you the rest of this stuff. Verse 18. Then Pharaoh called Abram before him and accused him sharply. He said, what is this you have done to me? I'm going to add the word boy to it. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? How I many know he, he should be yelling at him right now? Why were you willing to let me marry her saying she was your sister? Your knucklehead. Here, take her and be gone. This is amazing that God intervened in the situation. And he gets his wife back who he gave away and took all the presents for. And Pharaoh sent them out of the country. Look at this wording. Under armed escort. You're not going to a rest stop. You're driving straight through the state. You're getting out of here. Abram, his wife, and all his household and possessions. So they're asked to leave. They're telling you're, you're leaving. Chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. So they left Egypt. Why did they go to Egypt? Say it together. There was a famine. They didn't have anything to eat. So they left Egypt. And they traveled north into the Negev, where they, where they were originally. They're going back there. Abram with his wife and Lot and all that they owned. Look at this wording. For Abram was very rich in livestock, silver, and gold. What are you saying here, Pastor Rick? Abram got to take everything he brought with him and all the gifts that he was given for his wife being given away to Pharaoh. And he got to take all that away with him. How do you know that? Because if I am having a famine, I go to another country because I have nothing to eat. Everybody with me? But if I have a whole bunch of livestock and I'm very rich, how do you know now I have something to eat during famine? Everybody with me? And so God blessed them with more than they started with. Even though he made a boneheaded still decision, God still blessed him anyways. Does that like blow your mind anybody else? So they, he, he let him have more leaving than when he started with. And, and God wants to let you be blessed with all the things you've had, even when you've made boneheaded decisions, because he's a God of restoration. That's the kind of God that we serve. And, and so all these gifts, she, he was given a whole bunch of gifts, it said there, because 
his sister was going to marry the Pharaoh, and he, got, he took it all with him. You know what I think Lot would say to us after that experience? That God can work everything out. But come on, right? God can work everything out. I mean, we didn't have enough to eat, so we went to this place, Egypt, and then Uncle Abram gave Aunt Sarah away, and I thought we were all going to die, and I didn't know what was going to happen, and then they gave us all these gifts, and then they, then they arm escorted us out. I thought they were going to chop our heads off or kill us, and now we got more stuff than we were before we got there. Whoa, God worked it out. <laughs> Can I encourage you not to go that route, though? <laughs> Just work hard and trust God, okay? Even a bad decision, he can work it out for our good. Now, I'm not advocating sinning. Everybody here, I'm not giving us a license to sin. Listen, we fall into sin, we don't plan sin. There's a big difference, okay? We, we mess up, we, we repent, we tell God we're sorry, we were wrong, and we make a course correction. Repentance is a change of thinking which leads to a change of action. That, that's what the Hebrew is, okay? Romans 8, 28 says this, we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. So I'm going to ask everybody watching online, watching on television, in this building, do you love God? Oh, no, 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 no. Convince me. Do you love God? Okay, I, I'm, I'm feeling that. Then the promise is to work everything together for your good. You don't have to manipulate it. You don't have to fix it. You don't have to do it. You trust God. Now, we work and we do our things, but we trust God. So they left more blessed out of Egypt when they first came. And, and, and the famine led them there. And God blessed them despite their bad behavior or his bad behavior. So what are you saying? Honor God with your life. Honor God with your life. Don't ever give yourself a license to sin and justify sin. Honor God with your life. And I truly believe obedience to God brings the blessing of God into our lives. Amen, everybody. Come on, to God be the glory today. Amen. All right, that's week one. How many coming back for week two? We're, we, we're going to dig in. We're going to dig into Lot. It, how many know Lot had his own stuff too? We, we, we got to see him watching Uncle Abram. Well, believe me, Lot going to do his thing too. You watch. We're going to see a lot of stuff, and we're going to learn and grow together in the things of God. Amen. I want to pray for you. Father, thank you. You're just so good. You're so kind. You're so patient. We're amazed by your love for us. We see you touching Abram, even though he blew it again and again. God, forgive us when we disobey you and we let our fears get the best of us so we don't trust you. I'm sorry. Please forgive us. We want to be men and women of faith. We want to honor you and make you smile with what we say and we do. Thank you how you blessed this family even more than when they entered the land of Egypt. I, I'm, I'm blown away by your grace and your kindness. I pray that those that are getting, carrying regret on their backs from past decisions, that this word would go deep into their heart and they'd find peace. And Lord, you'd be a God of restoration and work everything together for their good. God, I bless your people today. Thank you for beautiful stories like this where we can see the goodness of God passing before them. Jesus, we love you, we praise you, and we honor you today. It's in your name we pray. Come on, if you agree with me, say a hearty amen this morning. Come on, amen. To God be the glory today. Thank you, God, for your kindness 
and your goodness to us. Could I ask that you just continue a little bit, just for a few moments in prayer, would you pray that anybody, whether you're watching online or you're watching this television broadcast or you're in this building, would you please pray for all those audience and, and ask God to just touch people's lives? I pray, pray that people who don't know Jesus would give their lives to him right now. Pray that people who need to rededicate their life to God would. would I'd be so grateful. This morning, so far, 10 people have already responded to the gospel. Would you pray that right now? I want to talk to some of you that you feel like God is so far away from you. Can I tell you, he's closer than you think, and he's waiting on you and me to just try to connect with him. How do you begin that journey, Pastor Rick? Well, it starts with what you believe. You've got to believe that Jesus is God's son, that he died on the cross, and he rose again, and he's alive right now. You've got to believe that. And if you do believe that, you're ready to take a next step. The Bible says he rose again three days later and he's seated at the right hand of the throne of God in a place called heaven. If you believe that, God's put faith inside of you and now it's up to you to take a next step. What's that? It's where you surrender your life to him. You tell him, forgive me of my sins, come into my life. I, I, in a moment, I'll lead a prayer. I'll help you articulate the words. All you have to do is mean it from your heart. And I believe God will give you a brand new start today as you say yes to him. There's people in this building, people watching online, people watching this television broadcast. This is your moment to say yes to him. Don't miss that. Maybe you fit in a different category where you say, I prayed that prayer at one point. I asked Christ in my life, but I'm not living right. My heart is convicted and I want to get things right with God. Would you please pray for me? Sincerely, I want to rededicate my life to God. It'd be a joy to pray for you. Please pray, everybody, right now. If that's you and you're in this building, I want to know who you are in a moment. If you're online, let us know by sending us a message. If you're on the television broadcast, contact the station. But if you want to make a decision right now and you're in this building and say, I want to give my life to Jesus or rededicate my life, we're not, no one's looking around. We're not gawking. We're not trying to make a spectacle of you, but I, I want to see who I'm praying for. So if that's you, would you just boldly put your hand up high right now if you're in this building and if you're online or watching on the television, God sees you. Yes, yeah, I'm just looking around the room. Yeah, 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 yeah. Going around the room right now. I don't want to miss anybody. Yeah, God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. How about on this side of the room? God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. How about the balcony? Yeah, I see your hand. Yeah, God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. Yeah, I see your hand. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. A lot of hands today. Could we pray this all together? And if you're watching and you're not in this building and you want to give your life to Jesus, pray this with us. Could we all pray this together? Would you say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died for me and that you rose again and you're alive right now. Please come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Change my life. Help me to be the person you want me to be and fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Come on, everybody. That's something to celebrate today. Come on. Glory be to God. You were just guided through the salvation prayer. If you gave your heart to Jesus today, you have made the best decision ever. You may be wondering, what's next? Well, we have you covered. Scan the code on the screen to learn how you can grow in your relationship with Jesus. If you'd like to connect with someone personally, you can text FCC Guest to 97000 to connect with our team. Now is the time in our service when we prepare to give our tithes and offerings. If this is your first time tuning in with us, please feel no obligation to give. This service is our gift to you. If you call FCC your church and you want to participate in giving today, you can text FCC Give to 97000 or give securely online at FCCLive.com slash give. I'm going to take this time to pray over our offering. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for this day and thank you for this opportunity to give. We pray that you use it to build your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
If you'd like prayer today, text FCC Prayer to 97000 and a member of our prayer team will reach out to you. We were not made to do life alone, so text us whenever you need prayer. Thanks for joining us for church today. We hope you have the best week ever.